but Dana did say George Zadaropoulos is What gonna, do you think about that? I don't like it. I think it's, I don't know if it's because George mandated that he wants to fight in Australia. Mm -hmm. I'm not a huge fan of this fight. I think George should get a higher level opponent. Um, we talked about it on the way back last night. I think maybe it's to do with him just being in a holding pattern because there's all these guys coming in at 155 yeah. that they, they want they want to keep them <laughs> kind of sharp but not give them someone too dangerous. I, of course, I respect Dennis Seaver. He's a d dangerous striker, but if it gets to the ground, Jordan D. Seaver's in big trouble. I don't know. Seaver just had an impressive rear naked choke <laughs> victory. Yeah, against an opponent who was basically Because <laughs> he just knocked wanted out. to try out his jiu-jitsu. Yeah. So. I mean, yeah, it's... It's weird, and that's a huge, huge reach, reach disadvantage for oh, Seaver. Yeah, George is a lot longer than him, so I'm not sure. But what? But I mean, I'll, I'll definitely, I'll have a hard time rooting for. I like George. Yeah, how are you gonna I pick like that? Seaver. I have no clue. I have yeah. no clue about it. So it's gonna be a tough one for me. Um, and then, uh, of course, the the next fight. What do we have? We had uh, uh, Phil Davis. Yeah. Tim Boach. Tim Boach. Which apparently Phil Davis has coined a new submission. Yeah, the Mr. Wonderful. Mr. Wonderful. As Joe Rogan deemed it in the... Yes. And he just out-wrestled him. And then that was bizarre how he, how he even started the hold because he was in side control and he was working the, the Kimura behind his back, yep. one arm, and then it looked like he locked it up from the other side and just kept torquing. And yeah. Almost looked like after the fight, like he might have broke something because Boach wasn't moving that left arm. Was he? Well, he said um, he said in the press conference, if you remember that, that Boach, he didn't think Boach was going to tap because his shoulders felt so loose when he was uh, trying to Kimura him. So he was just trying to be, you know, Johnny on the spot, I yeah. guess, and, and change up, change the hold to something else. And uh, um, now that he has this move, I'm sure he'll probably never use it again. But, <laughs> no, that <laughs> just now, looks like one of those things that just kind of happens. happens. And, it's uh, happened to me rolling a couple of times where you get your arm caught behind your back because you, you, you made a mistake. and. Mm. Know, usually from someone trying to come over you or something like that. But um, what do you think's next for him? For who? Phil Davis. Uh, 205 Davis. Oh, I was thinking maybe like uh, Thiago Silva for him. I like it. I like it. Big striker versus uh, more of a wrestler. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I could go with that. I don't know if Silva's busy. Um, I haven't had a chance to look at it. Obviously, we've been crazy busy this weekend, so if he's fighting already, I'm, I'm sure they'll find somebody else, but that, that is a good opponent, I definitely would, because he's kind of been out of the loop for a little bit, yeah. so, um, well, from there, we had, before the, the co-main event, uh, you I'm had to start sleeping in anticipation of this fight, Gerald Harris, Falcao, did they actually fight? <laughs> What, I swear to God, I thought I was watching a fucking dancing match. Yeah. <laughs> let's, well, let's dance off. The first three minutes, Falcao didn't throw a fucking strike. Yeah, they were. They gave each other a lot of respect. They were very, very concerned about each other's power and ability to knock out and just be be dominant. And nobody really did did anything. It, it's, no, except for the end of the first round when uh, Falcao was on his back, secures the rear naked yeah, choke, yeah, and uh, time checks out, and he keeps squeezing and squeezing. It looked like from our angle. That he choked him out, even though time had expired. That's what I thought, because I was I was actually outside of the arena um, getting a drink, and uh, I, I look. <laughs> no, just kidding. No alcohol. No alcohol. Actually, this, this is weird because it's the first time in, in a long time I haven't drank yeah. watching a UFC. Um, uh, it's one of the things you can't, I guess, not not, not supposed to do as as a as a guest of the UFC right. or whatever. But um, yeah, and I looked at the screen. I'm like, what happened? Is the fight over? Was it stopped? And then they go back to sit down. Yeah. I'm like, wow, It took weird. him like a minute or two to regain his composure. Yeah. I don't think he was ever able to reset and There's, recover after that. Yeah. Because he looked very tentative, even more so after that happened than yeah. he was in the first. Yeah, and then the third round, uh, I, I saw a stat that said uh, Falcao threw seven strikes in the third round total <laughs> in the entire five minutes. Why? That, that's about one, one, just over one per minute. I mean, yeah. what was he doing the rest of the time? I really, I don't know. It, the the crowd was booing so loudly that even after the fight, Joe Rogan didn't come into the octagon to even interview any of the guys because yeah. the place would went fucking bananas. Yeah, because the Detroit fans were rowdy. It was, it was that was a, a good crowd. crowd, by the way. Speaking yes. of, they, they they cheered at the right times, they booed at the right times. It was amazing because that that place was sold out, man. It was packed. packed. Whoever said Detroit is in a recession, it had, they're not in a recession when it comes to the UFC. No. Cause that there, there was a lot of people spending money in that place. It was, it was, it was full. So, 
Well, Falcao gets his first victory. I don't know what's next for him. I would assume a middle-of-the-road opponent. Um, Gerald Harris breaks his welcome to the UFC winning streak. <laughs> and, like, w welcoming everybody to the UFC, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, Harris is, you know, maybe they'll give him another person that's incoming to the UFC. <laughs> a first-timer, if yeah. you will. I really don't have anyone um, good I can think of for Falcao at this point. Uh, no. I, I think that we'll, time will tell in the next maybe couple weeks what they're going to do. They, uh, he said he wants to have another fight, but he didn't name anyone specific, so... Um, I think he's probably just happy he got his first victory in the UFC. Yeah, and f from the previous tapes of him, that was a completely different person that yeah. we saw because he used to come out super aggressive, just completely <laughs> overwhelm the guy, usually in the first minute to two minutes. Yep. And then this one was a complete opposite. So maybe it was part of his strategy, but UFC jitters. Weird. Maybe. Maybe. UFC jitters. I don't know. Um, well then, <laughs> we got to the BJ Penn Matt Hughes fight, and which, that, I just want to say the crowd was pretty pro Penn in there, man. And even at the weigh-ins, yeah. they were cheering. They were BJ, and this was the most insane, excited, like focused BJ I think I've seen ever. I almost want to call it possessed. It was I have a, never seen, like you look at, we were talking about this when we saw him just when he's in the octagon getting ready for the fight. When you look back to that Frankie Edgar fight, this, at least the second one, Yep. And he's sitting there, he just looked zoned out, glassed over like he had already lost the fight mentally. Yep. This one he gets in there, he's talking shit to himself, like all amped up, ready to go. Right then and there I'm like, oh fuck. <laughs> Yeah, he was swearing at himself. Coming. He was just—he was hitting himself in the face. He was yeah. super jabbering and talking about I don't know what. It's full moon, maybe like the yeah. tides and everything else. And you know, he came in with his with his entrance music, and he was focused. You know, <laughs> and he came out hard and heavy. And, then, and uh, of course, that'll get us into the main event. Woo! Rampage. And the crowd was super pro Rampage. They were. Wow, and they were almost pretty disrespectful to Machida, both at the weigh-ins he was getting booed and at the event. There were a lot of people booing. There was a guy, booing. The guy right behind us who, I, he was yelling, speak English, and all kinds yeah. of busy, you know, just derogatory comments with Machida. But yes, when Machida came out, there was a lot of boos. Rampage came out, the house almost blew up. Yeah. He, he came out and doing his howling and going crazy he had his entrance song from back in his pride days i think he said he said in the post-fight press conference that that was probably what got him to be so motivated mm -hmm. and excited for, for tonight it's because of that he's bringing his energy back trying to vibe from pride that was good missing. so um, give me your take on the fight you know, what do you think well it was weird the whole fight i don't know machida the first time seeing him in person it didn't look like the same Machida that we were seeing in the past. No. And I don't know if this was because of the, the first round rampage foot stomps. Did he, did he stub his toe? Did he break a toe? Could he not be as elusive? Didn't look like he had the same fluid movement that we're used to seeing from him. No, not really. Especially after Rampage tagged him a couple of times. Mm -hmm. It seemed like he got a little tentative and, he, you know, he, Rampage almost got him, caught him with that big uppercut when they were, when they were yeah. pressed against the cage and the clinch. And um, he was using the foot stomps in the first round really well. I don't know if that was a strategy, break a toe. You know, <laughs> yeah. So Machida can't move around That's right. his foot hurts. The Machida magic not working. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's weird. It's almost like Machida's reverted back to the shell of his old self when he was fighting guys like Tito and, you know, maybe even before that where he just was very, very... Uh, I didn't see the aggression. Middle. Yes. He, 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 he was trying to be evasive but not aggressive. Right. And um, there's some controversy regarding this fight as far as scoring goes. Um, I think a lot of people gave the uh, first round to... Uh, uh, the first round was, was kind of like more... I picked it as Rampage because, I had a rampage. because he was more aggressive and Machida really only landed a couple of leg kicks. There wasn't a lot of action in the first round. Yeah. But I, I can see how you may consider scoring it for Machida. The second round definitely goes to Rampage, without a doubt. The third round... Um, more Machida, especially because of that. Oh, yeah, it was all over him. There was that moment where I, we almost thought the entire palace <laughs> of the Bobberhead was going to come. Yeah, oh, my God. It's too bad that fucking Machida's got the cat like reflexes because. When, and, and it's another one where, yes, I had the same way. It was two rounds to Rampage. Uh-oh, we're, we're slipping a little here. Slipping, sorry. I had two rounds to Rampage. The third was Machida. We're going back to 
she doesn't mount and he's just sitting there raining blows down he's got to have to finish him at this point because i thought it was in the bag for rampage rain down blows minute left goes for that arm bar I'm like oh shit oh shit he starts picking him up the yeah. fucking crowd is getting ready to erupt and then he just fucking gets back to his feet like a fucking kitty cat ah uh, Bullshit, man. I wanted that slam. I wanted that slam so bad. The place would have went bananas, man. Oh, yeah. Especially if you knocked him out on it. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that was... For as much as the main event, I thought was a little bit... Uh, not so Anti-climatic. Yeah, after the BJ Pat knockout. Yes. That third round delivered. So they, they actually brought it back around, even though the first couple of rounds mm -hmm. were sketchy. The third round had a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um, you know... Rampage said after the fight he thought he lost, but again, then, then he said that, well, that I wasn't thinking because I just got done fighting. Yeah, because he offered him, he was offering Machida a, a, a rematch. Like, we should just do this again. And then Rogan said they should do it again. And the post fight press conference, Dana's like, fuck no, we're not doing that again. Rampage clearly won, so. Right. Well, Machida can't rematch everybody he fights, so it's not like a continuous rematch. No, no, no. Fights, you know. But, um,. Yeah, it was overall. It was a very exciting night. I mean, what do you think for Rampage? What what, what do you like for him next as an opponent? Well, that's a tough thing. You were mentioning maybe even if Shogun is out so much, Evans as a rematch. Do they do that as an interim belt? Like, how do they do? I think you almost kind of have to. You you kind of you kind of got to do that. And um, I think Rashad really wants the belt. And yeah. The first Ramp Rampage Rashad fight. I think Rampage. You know, he's coming off the movie. It's yeah. not the same guy we saw last night. So. It's just and the other thing, at the post-fight press conference, Rampage said he's been sick the last three days and almost had to pull out of the fight. But yeah. he said, I don't want to do this to Dana and the UFC again because I, I kind of did that before with the movie. So. Yeah, yeah. so he's we're slipping again. <laughs> it's not an angle. So, just um, ducked down. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so, you know, I, I like that. I don't know who else you give him at this point. Yeah, it's tough to say. Hey, look at it. I'm climbing into the picture. <laughs> John Bones Jones. Um, which I wouldn't win that either. Fuck yeah. <laughs> but, uh, Winner of the Jones Bader fight. <laughs> yeah, why not? Um, Feed him up. Hey, it will be exciting. Uh, so, overall, as an event, I know it's different when you're there live. Yeah. Of course, we had the whole experience of mingling around backstage. Yeah. So, that kind of skews my <laughs> It's I very mean, skewed. Compared to like sitting at home, drinking. On yeah. Couch or your couch or something, but overall, I'm really sort of impressed with how this car turned out. I yeah. thought it's up there for me. It's probably a good seven, maybe even an eight. I, I'm I'm at the eight, and with the access that we had behind stage or backstage at both the weigh-ins and like the post-fight and the post-fight press conference, yeah. pushed it to a nine for our, at least myself. But you know. Just from what I can see from the fights himself, I mean, that's a solid eight right there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I'm looking forward to uh, see what's going to happen here. We have a couple of fights that they announced already, and then some guys that they haven't yet. Maybe yeah. by the time we release the show, they'll show that. Um, but uh, very exciting UFC 123 Palace of Auburn Hills, Detroit, Michigan, which is also where I'm from. Um, and uh, of course, at this point in the show, we yeah. don't really get into viewer mail. But since I'm driving, I think it's, it's quite. It's bad enough we're driving with the camera in the car while we're moving. It's totally safe. I'm, I'm assuming this is highly legal. <laughs> well. Who says we're driving? You can't even see the vehicles behind us. Oh, you can see them. <laughs> <laughs> Just um, sitting in someone's fucking driveway, making yes, it happen. Yes. Why is this camera it's all good. It's all good. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, basically, we're just really happy. We want. I want to personally thank the UFC and, and their their staff for looking us up. I think it's, yes, it was an exciting experience. Hopefully, we get to do this a lot more. Um, you know, maybe we'll do this for a strike force, whatever comes in the in mm -hmm. greater vicinity area of the Chicago area. Definitely like to do that. It's bit, it's kind of surreal. Like going backstage, you see these guys on TV, and you're like, hey, there's uh, BJ Penn. <laughs> hey, hey, there's you know Jens Bolivar. Yeah. Hey, hey, Eddie Bravo. Well, I think one of the funny. the best moments being backstage is where, where we got our our press passes we're trying to get back there and check congos in front of us in line with oh, yeah. someone with him and 
the, the fucking security guard doesn't realize it's Czech Congo, so as he's trying to walk by, he's like, what, what is the problem? Uh, where's your pass? Where's your pass? So someone else has to go up, walks up to him and goes, it's fucking Czech Congo! Let him by!